So the heading is equation of half, uh, which I would call, <laughs> if it looks like a parabola, it smells like a parabola. Now, we haven't really talked about this in explicit terms, but one of the things that makes projectile motion really tricky is that you're dealing with not one, not two, but three variables. One, two, three. Think about them. Um, in fact, I've got them all on the board right now, even though I haven't explicitly said it, right? Um, you have a horizontal component to your motion, so I'm going to put, we're going to put a velocity on here in a second, so I'm going to say x dot. By the way, I hope you've gotten used to making your dots, because you really can't avoid it in um, projectile motion, because so, so many equations fly around. I hope you're getting used to making your dots really big and fat, and not just, don't just do that, because especially with the, like, your biro pen, it hardly turns up. If you're in an exam, you do not want to be the person who misreads their x dot as x, or x double dot, you get the idea. So we've got an x component, we have a horizontal component to this motion. We also have a vertical component to this motion. And uh, we've, got, we've had to change gears because you remember when we first had a look at simple harmonic motion and all of the straight line motion, actually, we had to sort of uh, get used to saying that the vertical axis on our graph was x. It was the, whatever displacement it was. It may have been left, right, it may have been up, down, whatever, but x was the only kind of displacement that we put on the vertical axis. But now we've actually gone into a world, we have two dimensions of motion. So we have x and we have y. But we have a third variable, namely, what's the other thing I have for? Time, right? Now, we've been used to putting time into these different equations and then getting results out of it, like where are you, how fast are you going, what's the acceleration, and so on, right? But what I want you to know, maybe if you've got another color, it might be helpful to remember this, right? What I want you to know is that time, it's a third variable that affects your other two variables, right? Let me say that again. It's a third variable, one, two, three, that affects your other two variables. Now we have a name for this. We had a whole topic on this. We call this a parameter. It's a third variable that affects your other two variables, right? So for example, on the unit circle, you don't have to go this part. On the unit circle, we can think of it in terms of x's and y's. But we can also think of it in terms of the angle subtended at the center between the positive x axis and the radius to whatever point you're at, right? So this theta, this third variable, affects your x and your y in terms of, well, you can call them cos theta and sin theta, right? Now, one of the big things, one of the, we spent a lot of time and effort in the topic of parametrics. Coming up with parametric equations, right? And x equals this and y equals that like this, and then we would eliminate the parameter, right? Sometimes it's really useful to do that. And we're going to do exactly the same thing here. Instead of having six equations, uh, x double dot, y double dot, x dot, y dot, x and y, we're going to boil everything down to just one equation that talks about the path of our projectile. And because it is just a single equation, we call it, originally, the equation of path, okay? Now, it's so much simpler. Uh, it has no time in it, so that's kind of you know, a disadvantage if you want to know when things are happening. The equation of path is not going to help you very much. But often you don't care about when. Many of the, think about the questions we've been asking you so far. We ask things like, where do you impact with the wall? Or, or when it rebounds off that, I don't know, that advertising board or something like that, where does it land, right? We very <laughs> frequently ask where questions, and all you need for where is x's and y's, right? So you don't need a when necessarily, okay? So what we are going to do, what we're going to set out to do is to create the equation of path, we're going to try and eliminate the parameter, okay? That's our goal, um, we're trying to eliminate time. So, to do that, we're going to do it right from the beginning, right from like, base principles, because I, I contemplated just giving you the equations and then we can eliminate the parameter fairly easily, but yesterday when Mrs. Lies, Mrs. Lisa and I were coming around to all of you, um, it seems like this was a thing that you struggled with, so I'm going to relay the baby down so that it sort of saturates a little better. So at time zero, okay, I want you to think about what we normally know about a projectile motion situation. Okay? We normally get given how fast it's going, so let's call it V, our initial speed. And then we also get given an angle of projection, right? So you've got alpha, like so. By the way, we call it alpha rather than theta because it's your angle of projection, this is where you begin. Right, so alpha, the first letter of the Greek alphabet, that's why it is what it is. Okay. Now, we'll come to x dot and y dot in a second, but what I want you to remember is that projectile motion always starts with two 
differential equations, right? Two equations that tell you what are the forces acting on this situation. What's what's changing your velocity and therefore your displacement? Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to have a horizontal force acting. Well, as you'll see, a horizontal force that isn't acting. And we're also going to have a vertical one. <clears throat> okay. So, we're going to do this from base principles. Okay. So, when you think about projectile motion, what is the horizontal force that's acting on this object as it flies through the air? Once it's flying, is it speeding up or is it slowing down when we talk about horizontal? And the answer is it's neither speeding up nor slowing down, it just kind of gets projected, it's not propelled, there's no rocket on the back of it, there's no parachute slowing it down, it just gets thrown, right? So there is no horizontal force acting on it, right? And in the same way, there is a single force that you have to worry about when it comes to the vertical component. What's acting on this? What's, what's bringing it back down to the ground and making it do that arc, right? Yeah. It's just gravity, right? So since it's gravity and it's pulling you down to the ground, we put a minus sign, because it's negative, right? And then we say, gee, uh, in this case, because I haven't told you what gravity is, like I haven't said it's 10 meters per second squared, or 9.8 meters per second squared, it's kind of 50-50 between those two. If you don't get told anything, you just have to say G for gravity. Okay. Now, just like, you don't have to write this down, just like in simple harmonic motion, where you always start off with this, right? This is the differential equation that describes everything. And just like in exponential growth decay, where you don't have to write this either, where we always start with this, right? This is kind of like, this is the differential equation that defines everything, okay? This here, this is the set of differential equations that define everything when it comes to projectile motion. So this has to be your starting point, okay? So now we have to climb up the ladder, right? We've got our first two equations, and now we need to get our next two. From acceleration, we're gonna to go to velocity. Thank you very much. So here, when we integrate once, you've got zero. So when you integrate zero, what do you end up with? You end up with a constant. Now, you'll notice as we go through this, I'm gonna to have to create four new equations, all of them are by integration. So I have counted one, two, three, four integrations to do. So therefore, I'm not just gonna say it's a constant, I'm going to say it's a particular constant, because I'm going to have a few more flying around, okay? Now, in order to find out what this constant is, <coughs> I'm going to have to go back to our diagram over here before, right? I need an initial condition of some kind. So when we have a look at the initial, like, what do we begin, right? What are each of these things equal to? We're going to use trigonometry here, right? You've got a right angle. So what's this horizontal length down here? What ratio are we going to use that connects Sorry. this to that? Sorry. Think. Here's alpha over here. X is adjacent, right? So this is going to be V cos alpha. Because cos alpha will be X dot on V, so I just multiply through by V. Does that make sense? In the same way, and obviously we might as well do it while we're looking at this right angle triangle, what will Y dot be equal to? V sine theta. And there's a nice, um, sorry, alpha, I should say. There's a nice parallel here between this diagram and um, our unit circle over here because you've got cos theta sine theta on the unit circle. That's horizontal vertical, right? It goes in order. And it's the same deal here. Cosines are about horizontals, sines are about verticals. Okay? All right, so I have my initial conditions. So I'm going to say, initially, I've got uh, x dot equals to v cos alpha. And I'm also going to say, because I'm going to use it in the next integration as well, not the next couple more afterwards, um, I'm also going to state this initial condition because I'll use it over here. Right? And why not? Okay. Now, I'm going ahead and putting this in another color and highlighting it like this because a lot of you I've noticed have gotten confused about y dot. Y dot is a function of time, right? It changes over time, as opposed to x dot. x dot is always equal to this because there's no force acting on it, right? It's nothing changing it. But a lot of you have sort of come to this, and then you try to substitute that into equations, but it's not something to be substituted in, right? It's, sorry, you try to substitute it into this, but it's not, it's just at a particular instant of time. It's not the function you're interested in, okay? So, once you do this, you can work out this first constant, what's it going to be? It's just gonna be v equals alpha, right? So that's great. And this allows me to do one more integration to finish off my x side. And you need to notice I keep everything over here, right? I integrate one more time over here, and I get, what happens to this? 
it gets a T on it because I'm integrating with respect to time. We tensor at the T um, in here, so that should be a capital, um, so that we don't confuse the T being inside the cosine, right? So that's the reason why it's tucked in the middle. And of course, because you integrate it in an indefinite way, again, you get constant two. Okay? Now, what we are doing is we're just considering like the most basic kind of projectile motion. So where would you think that we would start? Where would the projection point be? The origin. So I'm going to put 0, 0 over here. You can take that initial condition, right? I'm going to do this again. Initially at 0, 0. I'm going to use this for both the x and the y side, right? And from this, you work out that your constant here for displacement is just going to be, in this case, it's just zero, right? Because when you put zero into here for time, and you get zero over here for your initial displacement, there's, there's nothing left, you just have C2. So X is just going to be this, ta-da, okay? Now we'll come back to this in a second, because we want to eliminate T out of this, right? I've got a parametric equation, I don't want a parametric equation, I want a Cartesian one, so we're going to return to this equation in a minute. 